The Monerotopia guest segment is sponsored by Cake Wallet. Store, send, receive, and exchange your Monero and Bitcoin safely on iOS and Android too. Cake Wallet is open source and you always control your own keys. All no, right. No, no, you should be able to. <laughs> we, we got the star of the show. As at the outset, I was giving a little bit of a rundown of some of the topics you touched upon today. Four different presentations. How's it going, Luke? Uh, going pretty well. Thanks for asking. Finally done with all my talks here at MoneroCon. So. I, I think my my favorite graphic is when you showed, um, you know, if you continue at this trend, you'll you'll be giving 90% of all talks by what year or something. It was a um, hundred of the estimated 75 MoneroCon talks in year 2030. So stick around, guys. Uh, it, MoneroCon is slowly becoming LukeCon. Um, it, no, it really was, dude, tremendous. I mean, I know we're all here, like, kissing your ass and everything and saying how amazing you are. Because it's, it's true. Like, how, how, are you, how are you doing this? So two of my talks weren't actually about things I was working on. And one of my talks had a very nice slide about that. It was about how this is not being worked on. And it's just something to keep in mind, potentially, for future considerations. Um, but you put some thought into it. You weren't like, eh, here's a, I, you like, it was a pretty well uh, formatted idea. I appreciate puzzles. Um, and then for the two things I am working on, that's just Sarai and full chain membership proofs. I've been working on Sarai for years. That's kind of been what most of my time is on. Uh, full chain membership proofs is what I've been working on when I need some time off from Sarai. So they balance each other out. So if we if we could uh, try to cut to the chase for the people. So like Sarai, I think everybody listening here has heard about Sarai and can't wait for it to happen. Is there anything you dropped during that talk that you think maybe uh, might be newsworthy with regarding Sarai? Like updates, uh, you know, uh, estimates of launch, things like that? I said it was a decentralized exchange planning to launch with support for, you know, Monero, Bitcoin, Ether, DAI. So that's really great. I also said that I'm hopeful it's going to be uh, the 1.0 release will be this year. So that's good. Freaking amazing. And uh, yeah, to make it clear to people, I mean, it's, it's going to be also super, super easy for people to provide liquidity from day one, any user, because it's going to be built into Cake Wallet at, at launch. Uh, yeah, if we can get Vic here to confirm that, that would be great. Else, I'm just going to start making claims on their behalf. But yeah. So and once once implemented into Cake and once launched, uh, users through through cake would essentially be able to obviously there's other means as well would be able to easily provide liquidity uh yeah and not just provide liquidity uh as the network continues but also at genesis which will have some airdrop mechanics there and also ideally i believe will uh you'll users would also be able to sorry i don't want to comment on that at this time i don't think that one's gonna... users should also be able to provide liquidity at genesis which would earn them an airdrop of Sarai. And that's the part I wanted to highlight. Sorry for stumbling. <laughs> no worries. No worries. And then how about on the validator side of it? Um, is that something that people out there can get involved in? Or is that kind of higher level? How do, how do you... Be, so it, it seems like it's relatively easy to become a user, provide liquidity, obviously engage in in, in this in these swaps themselves. It's going to be very easy to do that. Um, how about if you want to be like higher level user and uh, be a validator, what's involved there? Yeah, so a uh, completely open process. Uh, anyone who wants to acquire the Sarai to stake to a validator and be a validator can do so. Um, they are going to actually have to then run their validator and run a Sarai node and run any other associated nodes. Like if they were a validator for the Bitcoin network, they'd have to run a Bitcoin node. If they're a validator for the Monero network, they have to run a Monero node. Um, and it's that kind of actually running the nodes and ensuring your node is healthy and properly configured and not just giving out all its data to random people on the internet who ask nicely. That does mean that, yes, you are going to have to have familiarity with Linux and ideally some system admin experience. And I'm not sure I can recommend it for people who don't have system admin experience. It's going to depend on exactly how detailed the guides are, exactly how complicated it ends up being. And exactly how good user experiences around that are. But 
is, is there a road to making that user friendly possibly too like through like like the Noto, for example something like that where it could be you know you're running your your sarai node on the note just as an example like is there a way to potentially uh, make it more usable to to be a validator yeah so someone could make effectively a graphical user interface for it and completely handle it on that that end and since the Noto is meant to be this kind of dedicated box sitting around the house uh running these sort of services that would be a candidate but then the concern goes to like network uptime where yes you can actually be slashed if you don't have sufficient uptime so while i'm not against people deciding to run a validator at their house they do have to be informed about that and consider do i have enough uptime that this is worth me doing and am i willing to take that risk personally Interesting, interesting. Other than bandwidth resources, um, internet resources, what are like the resource, you know, hardware and whatnot for, for running a validator? Uh, yeah, so we've been trying to do test nets uh, and resolve that a bit. Still no firm numbers. Uh, my initial estimates, it depends on what exactly you're a validator for. If you're a validator for Sarai alone, you only have to run the Sarai node. Not many additional requirements there. But if you're a validator for the Monero network, you also have to run a few services on the Sarai side and you have to run a Monero node. So then it becomes a lot more variable because not only do you have these additional services, you also have the requirements of a Monero node. If you run an Ethereum node, well, now you're going to add a couple terabytes of solid state storage and you also have to have all of the CPU power for an Ethereum node. So it really quickly starts varying there. Uh, for the Sarai node itself, I'm hoping four to eight gigabytes of RAM and two to four CPU cores should be plenty, um, especially when we're in early chain and not doing too much. That should be overkill, but I'd rather budget high and be better later than budget low and be wrong later. Amazing, man. Um, so let's move it because there's, there's so much to cover here. So that, that's Sarai. Fantastic. Full membership proofs. Anything, anything we we may knew we should have learned from an Aerocon that we may not already know with regards to full membership proofs. Uh, so there's nothing really been done in secret. Uh, last year at Monerocon, I kind of announced my work on full chain membership proofs outright. Uh, this year was the update to full chain membership proofs plus plus, and how where the current proposal is to not require the Seraphis upgrade to move forward with full chain membership proofs. And the way things ended up, this full chain membership proofs plus plus proposal ended up being feature complete with Seraphis. So not only does it not require the Seraphis upgrade to take place beforehand, it arguably means there's just not too much reason to move forward with Seraphis. And because of that, we would avoid the migration that Seraphis would have required. Just a lot of interesting things there. And it, Updates continue. Yeah. Are are you getting any pushback in, in in that regard with people like wait I don't you know are are there pro Seraphis people out there? Um. So, it was kind of a harsh idea to bring up. Like, what if we plan this major even when it was not feature complete with Seraphis and it was just full chain membership proofs before Seraphis? It's what if we plan this major hard fork and do all of this work? While we're currently planning the Seraphis hard fork and doing, do you want me to hold this for a second? Yeah, for one second. Thanks. When we're currently planning the Seraphis hard fork and doing all of this work, so that kind of consideration was shocking for some. But over the next few weeks, not only did the features kind of make a lot more sense, but the documentation was a lot clearer, so it's a lot easier for others to start reviewing it uh, and getting an understanding. And the performance comparison really solidified. Um, because the early belief was that Seraphis would still be a much more performant full chain membership proof. But at this time, the full chain membership proof plus plus is more performant than squashed Seraphis, the variant of Seraphis we were looking at deploying, and unsquashed Seraphis, which was presumed to be slower, squashing was presumed to be faster. Unsquashed Seraphis actually ends up theoretically more performant, uh, but we're still quite competitive with that. So we could move forward with the Seraphis protocol and get a bit more performance out of it, but it's not anything so meaningful. I believe it justified, and we can still use a lot of the Seraphis code base. So Seraphis, you know, this new migration and this new definition of output keys and addresses, no longer in the track 
uh, in our plans, in my opinion. Other people can say they're still expecting it. I'm sure we'll debate it six months from now. Um, but Seraphis, the code base, the new definition of a transaction, which is nicer to work with and remove some issues and complaints that we have with current transactions, we can still do that. The new wallet code, which would replace wallet two, which we've had tons of complaints about over the years. We can still move forward with that, just now adjusted to pull chain membership proofs plus plus, because all of that wallet code was for the new functionality of Seraphis and full chain membership proofs plus plus also does all of that functionality. It just has some different internals on how to achieve it. Amazing. Uh, difficult question, but if you could kind of describe a uh, real high level, what, what are some of the, what are the, the, the main things that need to get done to see this get fully impl implemented? I think you, you said within a, like a year, within next, by next MoneroCon potentially. What, what are the items in your mind that like need to get, to, obviously there's a million sub items, but like the main components that need to get done and happen? Yeah, so uh, if you actually pull up my research or development CCS, which was completely funded, very happy about that, very thankful uh, to the entire community for that. Um, it did itemize a lot of it. And that itemization technically was not for the integration into Monero, it was just for the set of libraries to be integrated. Uh, Berman, Justin Berman made their own CCS to do the integration among other things. Um, but the research and development CCS for the full chain membership proofs plus plus scheme themselves itself uh, largely provides a breakdown. It's solidifying the academic research. Uh, we use this one concept called elliptic curve divisors to gain a lot of our performance. And while that does gain a lot of our performance, it does need further academic review before we can push it to mainnet. So one of the recent things we did was contracted a firm, Veridice, to actually perform that review uh, and hopefully produce a formal security proof. So we're really excited for that. Uh, we use a modification of bulletproofs. Bulletproofs already used in Monero historically. It's generalized bulletproof. So we hired CypherStack and Aaron Fiker, previously known as Serang Nother, um, to do security proofs for generalized bulletproofs. Those came out technically uh, for a slightly even more functional scheme, so better than expected. But we also got generalized bulletproofs done. So in the future, um, just again, uh, continuing a bit more with the formal review, I think that's actually about it. And moving towards formal verification. Uh, right now there's this specification. You can read the specification as code and you can audit it meets the intent. Uh, but when we work with ZK circuits, one of the nice things we that's generally appreciated and we generally like to do in the community is formally verify it, which is kind of take a theorem prover, which takes a mathematical theorem and proves that this is correct for it, and just prove that, yes, this will absolutely gain the expected results. You want this piece of zero-knowledge code to produce this specific result or otherwise fail. Yes, we can mathematically prove it definitely will. So we'd want to get the specification formally verified, and then we would want to audit our implementation matches the specification. So it's kind of just this entire pipeline. There's a few different tracks which we're moving forward with in parallel, uh, but all trying to move ahead there. Um, once we get the audits, uh, implementation is already something that's going to be worked on. It's being worked on now as we speak. Uh, I believe one component known as the tree is largely implemented uh, on the Monero side of things, which is great. Just really moving forward all ahead here. Amazing, man. Obviously, we, we know you're the all-star here, There's but there's a lot of other people involved. Uh, you mentioned uh, Justin Berman. Who are some, what are some of the other names, contributors that are like participating in this upcoming process as we move towards full membership proofs? Yeah, sure. So uh, Tevador has provided some commentary and feedback I've greatly appreciated. Uh, they've also provided the curve cycle we're currently looking at using. Uh, with Seraphis, I propose moving to a curve cycle as part of the migration. Now what we're looking at doing is Monero is still using the same old ED25519 for its elliptic curve. We're just adding a curve cycle on top of that. It's a whole thing. A bit too complicated to get in here right now. But without the migration, and Tevador found a really nice candidate for that, which is great. And they also, again, helped refine the design, which I really appreciate. Um, they're not around, as far as I can tell. But uh, Jeffro is doing a lot of work on implementing Jamtis. Uh, it's not directly relevant to full chain membership proofs. They're still going to use the ex the plus plus variant. We'll still use the existing Monero addresses. Uh, but Jamtis is this more efficient, more functional, 
Seraphis better addressing scheme uh, proposed for use with Seraphis because with Seraphis we had to redo addresses, so might as well do a better address scheme while we're at it. Um, and now we're applying that to full chain membership proofs plus plus as well. So Jeffro has been working on feedback on that design, which was originally done by Tevador and also on the implementation of it. So I'm really happy Jeffro is moving forward on that end. Um, and then again, all of the existing work on Seraphis, which is done by, you know, R. Bruner, Co., uh, Dangerous Freedom, a variety of other people. I'm sorry if I'm not naming you here. Yeah. All of that work is going towards a cleaner and more modern Monero code base and should be largely applicable to this as well. So that's truly great. Fantastic, man. Uh, I know you mentioned curve trees there for a moment and you don't want to go down that path, but just real quickly. So moving on from full membership proofs, you did a presentation on uh, making Monero more scalable. And then I believe you kind of got into the weeds with that. And I think curve trees were involved in that deprecating. Explain, explain. What what was the novel pitch you gave today on how to um, take us to the next level in terms of, uh, you know, scaling on, on Monero? Uh, yeah, sure. So a bit of a background now that I can really choose how I frame this. Um, a few years ago, Monero wanted to remove rings. It's wanted to remove rings for forever. Um, but it was kind of proposed, how do we remove rings? What are the challenges to removing rings today? How do we build a protocol more amenable to removing rings? Um, or at least how do we improve rings? And there are multiple attempts at this. There was Arcturus, which ended up being broken academically and could not be deployed. Uh, there was Triptych, which did do better. Uh, it was still a ring solution, but it did do significantly better. Um, the issue with Triptych was it did not have a feasible multi-signature process. Uh, and then we kind of ended up on Seraphis, which still has this feasible multi-signature process and modularizes the membership proof. So Seraphis was proposed with what we refer to as crudel proofs, which are kind of just large rings, 128 people. And the plan was to upgrade that to full chain membership proofs. And all about all of this was just about improving Monero and taking it to the next step. And now with full chain membership proofs, we kind of solve the on-chain privacy. The only other on-chain privacy considerations are kind of um the amount of inputs on chain and the amount of outputs on chain after that you get pretty far out there so it's really great from a privacy perspective and we can make monero more efficient we can make it cleaner I'm not saying monero is done but that's the question like what's the next major upgrade for monero are we just making it more efficient for all time or is there any more functionality we would want to add and in my opinion it would be great if it was properly done. I have so many caveats to this. If we could add smart contracts. So wait, wait, wait. I'm, I'm getting confused. I'm crossing wires now, though. So you're, you're talking about programmability now on, yeah. on Monero. That was my talk today. Yes. No, but you had you had another talk on on. Yesterday. Yes, yesterday on you scale. Today. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's all been one long day for me, man. This is the better talk for scaling Monero. To be honest. Yes. But no, but exp explain this the scaling Monero part though. Uh, you know what? Smart contracts design? No, and then and then go and then we'll do that next. We'll do that one next. I just want I want to cover them all. Okay, I'm not sure how much my voice got picked up into the mic there, but apparently I'm being rerouted. Um, yesterday, on a completely different note, uh, one of the things discussed was various cryptographic things we could do to improve Monero, and for every single one, I said we probably shouldn't do it. <laughs> But one of the concepts was about full chain membership proofs. Right now with full chain membership proofs, we're ending up with a pro, um, with this proof, it's probably going to be a couple kilobytes added to the transaction. That's one of the nice things at, about it. We're not discussing adding a couple kilobytes to each input. We're discussing adding a couple kilobytes to each transaction and then a few hundred bytes per input, less than we currently do with CL sex. But you know, all, as always, we can always do more efficient proofs, and we should always be looking for more efficient proofs. Uh, and there is this one theoretical proof that would only be a few hundred bytes, so roughly six times smaller. Uh, and that would be based on a cryptographic accumulator, which is a bunch, which is a math term. It's been around for decades. It was actually used in Zeroin several years ago. I mean, Zeroin was Zcoin before Firo rebranded to Firo. It was also, uh, I think, most popular with Pivx of all things. Um, but basically, a cryptographic accumulator lets you do constant time and constant size proofs of membership, regardless of how big your set is. It doesn't matter if you have 
one output or a billion outputs, you get this very concise proof. Um, and that was premised not on curve trees, not on curve cycles, but on class groups of all things. And I kind of went into the cryptography on how we could get this better proof in theory and what would be the practical issues with that. Uh, I also went over a few other ideas about uh, improving wallet syncing, about how we could kind of get this sync your entire wallet over the entire blockchain in less than 100 RPC requests, and why that one definitely doesn't work out in practice. We need a few more theoretical improvements there, unless we're willing to have every transaction be about you know a gigabyte in size. Um, other ideas included uh, better remote wallet syncing. You could have someone else sync your wallet for you without a loss of privacy. And then also better privacy when sending Monero when talking to an untrusted RPC. The only real scaling one, I think this was kind of the cause of the confusion, the only real scaling one was that first one, just the more efficient membership proof. Okay. And it's not that we couldn't discuss that one. It's that I don't think there's enough benefit to justify it. Because, yes, it's like five times faster, smaller in theory, but it comes with a bunch of bite on the back end that I'd really rather focus on making our current proof and our current line of theory that much more efficient rather than hopping to this complete other line of theory. So then back to programmability. Is there anything else you want to say, say on that? Oh, I'd love to say more. So on the programmability note, I don't actually believe like we should just add smart contracts blindly to Monero. But the question is, can we add smart contracts to Monero while within the Monero ethos, while maintaining our privacy, while maintaining exactly that, you know, the privacy. And also not bickering for ages about which exact smart contract platform to use. We just want a platform that is Turing complete and offers all the functionality we would want, but without opening denial of service vectors, without causing the Monero blockchain to be four terabytes, without all of these considerations. So that was a talk I gave this morning about how in the future, you know, once we kind of solve privacy for value transfer, well, if we can't further improve privacy, how do we improve functionality? And it was on private smart contracts. So smart contracts where you don't, on the blockchain, it's not revealed what the code is. When a smart contract is executed, it's not revealed which smart contract is executed. It's not revealed what arguments it's executed with nor is it revealed what it does while it's executed. Um, and that was kind of an idea I gave today based on recursing ZK snarks. Uh, no, this would not use a trusted setup. There are ZK snarks without trusted setups nowadays. Uh, specifically, we would look at using Spartan. Um, and it's not something anyone's working on now. It's not something that we can start working on. We're currently working on full chain membership proofs and ensuring that's all good. But once we do full chain membership proofs, the question is, do we just want to improve efficiency and be happy as the fastest value transfer protocol? Or do we want to enable this more functionality? Because this isn't just smart contracts, DeFi, Ponzi schemes. No, it's also layer twos and not just layer twos like payment channels, but it's also if someone wanted to do an Ethereum virtual machine layer two and offer all of Ethereum to Monero, they could do that. But if someone wanted to do a layer two, which was just Monero, as a layer two. So now you have this Monero base layer and you have this Monero layer two, which is almost effectively a shard. And it still has all of the security of the Monero layer one, still has all of the finalization properties of it, but it has lower fees because it's not the layer one, it's a layer two. It also has a bit reduced privacy, but with enough users, it still has more than enough privacy for anyone. And then when that layer two becomes congested, we just spawn a new Monero layer two. You know, it doesn't have to be Smart contracts, gambling, DeFi. It can also just be legitimately making Monero this project that can handle 7 billion users. So yeah, that was kind of my idea. And because I don't think Monero will add the Ethereum virtual machine anytime soon, even if that gives us L2s, the question is, what smart contracts would Monero add that would give us L2s but not be abominable? And that's why I was discussing private smart contracts, which is a really interesting uh, puzzle to solve. Insane, man. You're, you're blowing my mind. I think you're blowing a lot of people's mind right now. Um, so you said, and I think you you can't, you covered it, but maybe I meant, so what would the privacy sacrifice be there? If we were used to use this approach, uh, create smart contracts on, on Monero, use that to create a layer two, let's say a Monero on a light Monero on Monero. You mentioned some private potential 
privacy concerns, what would they even be there? Yeah, so uh, the smart contract scheme itself doesn't actually sacrifice privacy. Um, practically, yes, whoever's interacting with the smart contract should have the code and should verify that is actually the smart contract they're interacting with. Um, yet, the nice thing about that is you only need the people interacting with the smart contract to have that info. It's kind of like Monero today. Yes, if someone sent me an output, I look at that output and I verify it's correct. And then if I'm a charity and I want to publish my puts, anyone who wants to verify the charity, they look at those outputs, they take the charity's view key and they verify them. Same concept here. If there's a smart contract you want to interact with, you would grab the smart contract view key and you would verify it. So it's not the smart contract scheme that has reduced privacy. It's if you do a Monero L2 and you personally put yourself on the Monero L2, then your privacy is not the privacy of Monero. It's the privacy of Monero, the L2. So if there's only two people using that L2, your privacy is that of those two people. But, you know, if Monero has a million users on the L1 and it's a dollar transaction and we create an L2 and it has a hundred thousand users, you know, well, it's only one tenth of privacy, but you're going to have transactions that are significantly cheaper and you're still discussing privacy within a hundred thousand users, which should be good enough for more people. Insane, man. Speaking of blowing minds, so obviously you're blowing everybody's mind here. Is there any any things in particular that kind of blew your mind or where you're like, oh, things that you learned here at MoneroCon or came across or talks that you're most interested in? Uh, there was a talk by the basic swap people, which I really liked. It kind of just really honed in on why atomic swaps are great. You know, no third parties, trustless, decentralized, uh, just very straightforward, very clear security guarantees. And Despite my work on Sarai, I do still appreciate Atomic Swaps. So I think that might be the favorite talk I attended. Uh, I also attended uh, Aaron's first talk on security models, and that was great. It was just an overview of how we kind of formally discuss security with regards to cryptographic protocols. I also attended uh, Jeffro's talk, which was uh, good. It was about Jamtis and kind of all of this new functionality we get with the new addressing scheme. So there's definitely been a few quality talks I appreciated. Fantastic, man. Thank you so much. Amazing. We could, you know, go for hours. I mean, I, I just, I can't believe how prolific you are in the amount of work you're doing. Just, just hang in there, man. Are, are you eating enough protein? Are you getting enough nutrients? I am. Thank you. All right, man. We, we love you, man. You're, 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 you're an amazing individual all, all around. I mean, not just with the, what you do with the coding, you have a fantastic personality. You're always, very extremely sarcastic, but always very positive, and we love it. Thank you, man. Thank you. Yes. All right, we we got. Uh, oh wait, hold on, hold on. You guys, yeah, you're you're in there. Okay. Um, sorry about the awkward camera angle here. So we got we got the Z Zano guys on. I'm bringing you on because, well, obviously we, we want to hear about what you're here to to present and talk about at MoneroCon, but I also want to highlight that you guys were a sponsor of. Monerotopia, and by way of that Copa Monero, which is this is the pre-show for for Copa Monero right now. Uh, I don't even know if you guys are aware, but you're sponsoring one of yeah. one of the first teams. So it's it's Cake Wallet versus Zano, uh, which is very cool. So we greatly appreciate that, uh, and we'll we'll see that hopefully at eight o'clock things will work out and we'll go live with Copa Monero. I think we got the stream set up. Um, but Zana, what, what are you guys doing here at MoneroCon? What are the what messages, uh, things are you presenting here at MoneroCon? Um, well, uh, first of all, we have a uh, we uh, thank you. Uh, we came here to meet uh, all the people uh, from the community because it's like a really great place, uh, same as uh, same as yeah, <laughs> same as Monero Topia, by the way. Yeah, um, where uh, a lot of people from a privacy from privacy industry uh gathered here and uh that's really great a lot of speakers a lot of uh, good speakers here and uh, we are excited to be part of it too uh tomorrow while we'll be speaking uh, our lead developer will be speaking about uh, technologies that we do in zana also about confidential assets that we will be presenting tomorrow um that's that's it pretty much <laughs> yep yeah. i mean those those are big things. Are you guys um like talking to other devs and stuff, making any you know, collaborations, connections? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's always <clears throat> good to be here because um, 
me personally, I love the vibe of Monero Talk, uh, uh, Monero Con, Monero Topia. It's just such a different vibe than any regular crypto event, you know. Um, and yeah, we we have a lot of partners here, like uh, Exolix and uh, Cake Wallet. That uh, it's always nice to catch up with them. And and any any new insight when you might see Xano live on on Cake and um, well, integrations basically near complete so yeah, okay. um yeah. maybe a month or two i might don't maybe pin me down on it yeah. <laughs> we're holding you to it you heard yeah, it first here sure. i'm in Aratobia, america it's actually maybe a few weeks because we actually made integration we test everything but uh we the only thing is left that we have to fix this uh ios uh, build scripts because we it's already working on android so we tested uh, everything and uh yeah, we just uh, was in touch with Amar, and he's busy with his. Uh, they doing right now something that they call silent payments, I think. Yeah. And they are just super busy with this stuff. But I think we'll figure this out in a few weeks, and it's gonna be live very soon. We we really hope it's gonna be live really soon. Fantastic. Well, I mean, so far Cake has proven to to move pretty fast with things, so uh, I, I'm sure it's gonna happen. I know they got a lot on their to do list. I'm trying to get them to add. The Monero uh, LWS Light Wallet server, so it could better integrate with the with the Noda. So we're all we're all waiting online for for Cake to, to add so. things. Um, are there other uh, collaborations coming up? Like any any listings that, that you guys are working on, or things that you want to talk about that might might be happening? You you mean like interesting stuff about Zano in general? Or yeah, no, like like uh, you know, seeing Zano getting added to a new exchange or any yeah anything. Well, I think uh, most interesting for us now or is edit, you know, added as a as a new trading pair with um, I don't know, even like basic swap, for example, or like what yeah. you know, some of the or like uh, Sarai, right? Like these things. We are... have a lot of integrations coming up. So cake wallet integration, uh, Bitcoin.com wallet integration is coming up. Uh, we would love to get on basic swap decks. They also want us to get on there. Oh, okay. Um, so I, I just pulled that out of my ass, but okay. Yeah, yeah. It's we we are talking with them, so maybe. But it's now it's just talking for now, so no progress on with that. Uh, but yeah, on the Zano front, like development wise, uh, Zano Trade is going to be our own decentralized exchange, which is almost alpha release time. So yeah, probably we can get on Serai because Luke uh, Parker is doing this thing right. So yeah, we can uh, get listed there probably. Yeah. You sure? Well, yeah, the, the, you can so. go talk to the man himself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what the process is. I don't, I don't want to start anything. <laughs> Maybe we could work that out of Monerotopia. Maybe that's more. <laughs> the conversation will continue. Um, that's amazing, guys. But yeah, I'll, I'll let you guys get back to hanging out. I just wanted to get you guys up here. Anything? Any other information you guys want to want to put out? Yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, uh, events like this are uh actually one of the like just the monerotopia and monerocon is basically the only events we can be where we can meet all the main developers and researchers in this area because the privacy is a very different from uh, like general blockchain technology it's more complicated and you need a very specific people uh very with a very strong mass background and uh that's basically the only events where you can find people like this and we really appreciate the sevens because of this too because we also we building technologies yeah but we also need the peer reviewers with the right background and uh, that's where we can see all the right community right people for that that's that's great yeah there, there's something to be said when you come together in the physical and you can look each other face to face and ha have a conversation and see the people behind it uh, obviously there's those that want to remain completely anon and that's fine or sometimes they they come here as anon and they they, they talk in different ways but it's it's real yeah it it's the value that comes out of these conferences is it's hard to it's hard to even like you know put a number on it yeah exactly and like we have so many people that we work with but when you come here you finally attach like a face to the person behind that online character these aren't like conversations about you know pumping anything or where it's like it's like raw uh tech and like nerds talking together right. about the tech yeah and how you can help each other and like seriously man i think most progress is also like it's not only about education here but also so much progress is being made, like all the people that you talk to on like only already today, like you get so much new stuff and you, you agree on so many things, which is which is great for Zano and for Monero and any project here. Yeah, definitely. 
Fantastic, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you for sponsoring Monero Topia and Copa Monero. Greatly appreciate it. And yeah, excited to have you guys down in Mexico, too. Super excited yeah. about that. Cool. Yeah, thank you. We appreciate to be part of this, and we appreciate everything that you do. Thank Cheers. you very much. Cheers, Cheers man. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Fantastic. I'm glad thank I caught you. you guys. All right. We got Felix. Felix from Basic Swap. What's going on, man? How you doing? Uh, doing great. Doing great. Excited for Copa Monero. And, um, you know, we just uh, had this um, on, the, on the main stage. We just... Uh, showed everybody displayed everybody the basic swap decks and uh we're very excited about what's coming up basic swap decks uh maybe a web framework soon um new coin integration soon as well uh talking wow narrow friends at wow narrow friends at decred and um you know everybody. talking about adding possibly adding wow narrow and, and decred uh, it's it's already on the dev branch uh, and it's very very close to releasing on master and uh we're just very excited about the enthusiasm of different you know uh, open source project when we have uh, different um, open source contributors coming developing and, and and giving their time to the project that's you can't really ask for better than that yeah man i think people are very like we said we, we, had, we had luke who who's talking about uh sarai decks which everybody's very excited about but we already basic swap exists you can use it right now it's working it functions um what kind of any any insight into volume? I know that you know it's 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 not completely there yet, where it's super user friendly for anybody to jump on. But are you can you give us any insights into actual usage? Yes, um, and that's something uh, this conversation we had actually right after the the speech we just had is um, it's very hard to establish the, what the kind of volume you have on Basic Swap. You can sort of infer, okay, is this more popular than it was last week or last month based on the amount of orders? But orders can be taken over and over again. And so private that you never have an idea of how many times an order, a given order, was taken. Uh, especially if it's an order that's, uh, you know, it's it's in the benefit of the person offering the the swap in question to keep it up because he makes five percent off of it or something. So you, it's very very hard to establish what kind of volume we're talking about, and almost, to be honest, nearly uh, impossible. So it's it's a great question. Um, we're, we're, we know we're doing better than, than three months from now, uh, three months ago, rather. But uh, we, we're very in the dark when it comes to uh, the exact volume by virtue of how private the whole thing is. Fantastic, man. Fantastic. Um, are you getting any, uh, like, what's some of the feedback you're getting here with Basic Swap? You're talking to s super technical guys, the Monero devs. You know, what's some of the uh, tough love that you're getting here? Um, honestly, it's been awesome, uh, and I love talking to Luke about stuff like that. Luke has great insight on everything, you know, to be honest, everything Monero-related. He said your talk was his favorite talk, actually. Uh, yeah, because it was the thing he was most interested in. So, yeah, yeah, that mean that? Because I was like, you blew everybody's mind today. What are some of the things that blew your mind? That you're... And so, the Matt, Matt props to that. That's a lovely thing to hear, because I have a lot of respect for the man. And uh, as he said, he's, he's happy we're here. He's happy we, there's an atomic swap adapter signature platform that's you know doing the legwork to make Monero more resilient and uh, other privacy coins more resilient in the face of you know growing uh, um, you know th this war against privacy coins that we're seeing so I'm, I'm definitely a, a big fan of Luke Parker's so maybe some of the criticisms maybe that are valid right now for basic swap it's, it's a little hard to install it's a little involved uh, there's a reason why Luke Parker stayed away from from atomic swap so he wanted something that was faster something that was uh, more user-friendly, easier, easier to integrate in some, something like Cake Wallet. And all of that is very valid. And uh, we're just doing something different. And uh, we believe in it. And he believes in us. And we believe in him. And I think uh, there's there's room for both here, for sure. Fantastic, man. What uh, what does the future of Basic Swap look like? You know, uh, when does it get to the point where a noob like me can easily use Basic Swap to swap in and out of Monero? and between the other cryptos yeah, i think we're we're actually pretty close uh, i had a we had a, a workshop yesterday uh it was in the upstairs room it wasn't filmed unfortunately but um right now if i think if you're able to install basic swap and if you're able to enable the coins that you want to enable and you're able to use a okay. wallet i think you're <laughs> you're very very well basically there you, you're on your way to, to accomplishing an atomic swap as it's far 10 as minutes. Uh, if you have 30 minutes, uh, atomic swaps more, are, are slower than, than other kinds of swaps because it has to go through a confirmation. It's very, um, 
blockchain. It's on the blockchain. It's 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 not outside of the blockchain. So it's it's really you're you're transacting with blockchains. And um, if you're willing to give your time to that and, and to let your your nodes sync, you need your nodes, you need your coins on your wallets. And if you have that ready, you're ready to go, man. Right. So anybody who can knows how to run a full node, running full node for their can 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 do basic swap. It's an amazing idea. If you have your full node already, you're halfway there. All right, man. Thank you so much. We got to move along. I want to get the stream up. And thanks for sponsoring Copa Monero, which I don't even think you're aware of. But because you sponsored Monero Topia, we're giving you a team, which is fantastic. <laughs> you're second game up. So it's going to be basic swap playing Firo in the se second game that starts at 10, 10 o'clock. We'll, we'll yes, 10 o'clock. Yeah, it's 8. To, yeah, 8 is the first game and 10 is the, the next game. Yeah, I know. But yeah, everybody at home will be watching, which is fantastic. All right, awesome. And uh, we'll see you in Mexico, right? We'll see you in Mexico City? All right. I hope so.